Now that we've completed our corridor modeling to this point, I would like to create an overall composite top surface that covers this entire corridor model. Let's zoom in. The only remaining surface that we have to create is right here in this blend area. I'm going to select that corridor and then I'll come up and use the corridor surfaces shortcut. I'd like to create a new surface. I'm going to call this SR7 blend area top. For the surface style, I'm going to choose triangles one-to-one -one existing green, same as before. Let's add some data for the surface to triangulate to. I'd like to select all of the top links. We'll add those to the surface. I'd like to add these as break lines, and then I'm going to use a top links overhang correction. Based on what we saw earlier, I'm going to add some feature lines as well. Let's add the back of curb feature lines. I'd like to add the face of curb feature lines, and then we will add the flow line gutter feature line. Next, we'll add a boundary to the surface. We'll go to the Boundaries tab. I'll right-click on the surface name, and I'll choose Corridor Extents as Outer Boundary. Let me click OK. We'll rebuild the corridor. I'll press Escape to deselect, and then we will select the surface. Let's pull this up in the Object Viewer and take a look. I'm going to tip this up and zoom in. You can see that we have nice definition there on the bull nose, both north and south. Let's orbit this around. You can see the three-dimensional properties. Once again, you can see the nice drop going around the bull nose in both cases. So we've got a nice surface there that connects the corridors. Let me close this. I'll press Escape. Now that we have surfaces for all three corridor models, let's merge them all together and create one overall surface. I'm going to start by hiding the surfaces that we have. Let me select all three of these, and then I'm going to go over to the Properties palette, and I'll change their style to No Display. Next, we'll create a new surface. This one will represent the composite condition. I'm going to open the Surfaces menu and I'll choose Create Surface. I'll call this SR7 Composite for the style. We'll choose a different style for this one. I'm going to go with Triangles 1 to 1 Existing Orange. That'll show up well on screen. I'll click OK. So the surface has been created. It has no data at this point. Let me open up the Prospector tab. We'll open the surfaces category and I'm going to come down to composite. Let's open up that surface. I'll open up definition. This surface is going to get its triangulation from other surfaces. I'm going to right click on edits and then I'll come down and choose paste surface. I will then select all three of my State Route 7 surfaces and I'll click OK. All of them have been pasted into the same surface model so it represents a single surface now. I'm going to select the surface. We'll go to object viewer. We'll tip this up and take a look. We've got nice lane definition, we've got nice traffic separators, the bull noses and the transition look good, as well as some of the other additions that we made earlier, adjusting our gutter slopes to clean up the transitions between the Type D and the Type F curb. When I'm finished reviewing my overall surface model, I can close the object viewer, and then I'll zoom out and we'll center the model on screen. As you can see, it didn't take too much effort to model a significant portion of a real-world roadway project. Don't stop here, though. Try and take some of the tools and techniques we've learned here and incorporate them into some of your own corridor models.